Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about Anime News Network and Vic Mignogna. And no, it's not 2019. Uh, we had another incident pop up this week. Okay, perhaps that was a perhaps that was a poor choice of words, right? Uh, Vic Mignogna was on a live stream uh, with some ladies on YouTube, including uh, Chrissy Mayer, I guess. And uh, something happened. The camera panned down to his groin area. Anime News Network made this out to be a huge deal. Uh, they put a video up about it uh, out on Twitter and was like, oh my God, Vic's exposing himself to these women. And he clearly was wearing shorts or something, but uh, Anime News Network put a censored bar over his areas, which would imply that he was nude, which he was not. Now, I think two things can be true at the same time. One, if you're gonna go on a live stream and there is even a remote chance that somebody could see your nether regions, for the love of God, wear pants. You know, I understand newscasters do it and I understand, you know, whatever. They wanna be cool, whatever. That's, that's fine. But yes, please wear pants. You don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, two, Anime News Network is on the prowl looking for any reason whatsoever to uh, defame and slam on Vic Mignogna. Uh, apparently this thing is not over. Now what's what's concerning about this, if I were Katakawa, Katakawa who uh, paid you know cash money, not very much from it, I understand it, but Katakawa Corporation bought Anime News Network. Um, it was uh, about a month ago. And here we are a month in to this new relationship with Anime News Network and they're already grinding axes with people they have grievances with and potentially open, opening themselves up to litigation. So they gotta be really careful. I don't think Anime News Network fully understands how uh, Japanese corporations think, how they operate in terms of what is expected of you because they've been primarily a fan site. Yeah, they've interacted with Japanese companies for years, but they've never actually been owned by one. As far as I know, they've had, I guess, relationships with different ones here and there. I don't think they're going to be real happy about this. And, you know, I've got some other, other reasons to think that. And, you know, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if in the very near future, there was a complete gutting of editorial in Anime News Network, because obviously they still think that they're independent and they can just run with whatever they want to run with, right? Um, in fact, Comic Book Resources put up an article uh, talking about the Vic Mignogna uh, uh, faux pas, and they took it down. They actually took it down. This is an archive of that article. They took it down because they probably realized that it was a non-issue. Uh, Vic Mignogna actually explained what happened. He did a video. He said, hey, you know, the way the camera set up on my computer, sometimes it pans down. Now, I would like to think... I would like to think, and look, you know, for those of you who are like, you're just Vic stands. Actually, I don't know Vic. I've never talked to Vic. We've done videos about Vic um, on occasion because it is a very strange situation. The lawsuit was pretty much unprecedented for this, you know, for this industry. And, um, and I have a bit of a personal axe to grind with Anime News Network. I'll tell you the truth because one of their editors, uh, Mike Toole, uh, called me a Nazi when I was, I was actually in the... Uh, where was I? I was in the Caribbean. I was in the Caribbean, and I find out that I'm being called a Nazi on Twitter by uh, Mike Toole. And uh, there was no retraction. There was no apology. There was no whatever. And I'm like, what the hell? Literally just because we did videos covering the situation. And we tried to be objective. Now, and I want to be clear about that, too. The, the situation with Vic, um, I, to this day, have not, I have not seen sufficient evidence to... Uh, show that he has done the things that Anime News Network and other people have accused him of doing. Anime News Network did, however, run with fabricated evidence. Uh, they ran a hit piece on him back when the Broly movie came out, which is actually what knocked over the first domino and led to him getting fired from pretty much every studio. It was Anime News Network was behind that. And I did mention that. I said, you guys, basically, you, you were the catalyst that got uh, Vic Mignogna fired from literally everything. And, um, you know, then, of course, we had the court case. He did not win his court case. Uh, I would tell you, I think the reason he didn't win his court case was because his his lawyer is a buffoon, personally. I, I mean, I, I, I honestly think it was it was really handled badly um, all the way around. And uh, if it were me, if it were me, 
uh, I would have gone after Anime News Network first, not after Funimation, because you could prove that they were actually uh, publishing defamatory stuff. But that's just that's just me. That's my personal opinion on it. But um, you know where I want to go with this is that Anime News Network has apparently learned nothing. Uh, even though they have a new corporate owner, and they are going to fool around and find out. I guess I can say fool around and find out on here. They're going to fool around and find out, in my opinion, uh, what their new corporate overlords uh, expect from them. And they were kind of tap dancing that they were going to have complete editorial oversight. Uh, you know, they're kind of live streaming from their bedrooms here because they can't afford a studio. We even have a studio. Come on, guys. You know, 66 quote tweet, tweets. Um, and yeah, Peter Pischke's right. You know, did you guys get bu- did you guys just get bought for pennies on the dollar from Katakawa? Yeah, they did. And this is what Katakawa bought. This is what they bought. They bought uh, a rogue uh, anime news site run by people that have an axe to grind with other people in the industry. They're probably defending their friends. I completely get that, you know, to some degree. But uh, don't say your objective news because you're clearly not an objective news site, right? And uh, I do believe that Katakawa is going to probably clean house. So uh, let's check this out too. This is the article that was removed from Comic Book Resources based on that tweet. This is an article that Comic Book Resources did around the tweet, about around the tweet uh, dealing with Vic Mignon. And of course, we recognize some names. It was based on a tweet by uh, Renfamous. Renfamous, who has been uh, notoriously uh, anti-Vic Mignogna, anti-Comicsgate, anti-YouTuber, has actually kind of made, I believe, a career for herself, if you want to call it that. I don't think Renfamous gets paid. Does Renfamous get paid? I don't know. Uh, made a career out of uh, basically harassing a handful of people uh, to be the anti. And um, they built an entire article around it. So if you want to see... You know, we've talked about this Whisper Network and we've talked about the um, all the links from the uh, Twitter people to the uh, journalists to, you know, the different publications and how they're all kind of interconnected. And this probably was a result of that, if I had to guess. I mean, I, you know, I don't know for sure. But the fact that Remphemus comes up in this and it's on comic book resources, you know, and it's something like obviously somebody was hate watching the extreme and that's that's how they even got that footage anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to read the article that was removed from again, removed from comic book resources because they were probably worried about potential litigation and anime news network should be worried. I think about potential litigation at the very least. And, uh, you know, the possibility that editorial could get gutted because I don't think Katakawa is going to put up with this crap for much longer. Uh, disgraced voice actor Vic Mignogna exposes himself during live stream. Vic Mignogna did not deliberately expose himself during the live stream. The camera happened to pan down to his shorts. He should not have been wearing shorts on a live stream. For the love of God, you just got out of a big uh, legal battle over uh, sexual misconduct allegations where Pants. Dude, I don't know you, but wear fucking pants. Beyond that, though, he did not expose himself. That is a lie. Uh, Disgraced voice actor Vic Mignogna exposes himself during live stream on comic book resources. Again, they took it down because it's, it's, it's very defamatory. Vic Mignogna is known for his many voice roles in anime dubs, but the sexual harassment controversy surrounding him continues with a recent incident. He did not expose himself. The camera slipped, went down to his, he didn't, he wasn't naked. Again, Anime News Network being Anime News Network. And this is very similar to uh, what happened with their 2019, I think it was 2019 article. They put a little sensor box there to make it out like it was actually his junk. It was not his junk. It was not his junk. Okay. He should have been wearing pants, but it was, it was not, uh, not his junk. Twitter user Remphemus posted a video clip of the incident, which occurred on December 5th, during which the post, uh, during what the post calls an all-female right-wing YouTube stream. One woman is talking about her pet cat. Sounds like a bunch of Nazis, right? To me. And Mignogna smiles and appears to move his camera. The camera pans down, reveals that Mignogna has no trousers on. He didn't expose himself, though. The stream host quickly cuts off his video and says, we lost Vic as the three women laugh. 
The majority of replies on the tweet were appalled, but one of the streamers, Chrissy Mayer, stated that the incident was not a big deal and a boomer moment. Other replies suggest the clip may be very unprofessional, but not necessarily sexual harassment. If that is the case, why is the headline, Disgraced Voice Actor Vic Mignogna Exposes Himself During a Live Stream? And again, we always have the same names and these sorts of things uh, uh, come up, don't we? That some of these names come up very often. Vic Mignogna is mostly known for his role in anime dubs, including his voice work for Edward in Full Metal Alchemist and Tamaki in Oran High School Host Club, which my daughter loves. That's actually, I think, probably her favorite anime. However, he hasn't received voice roles for several years now due to Anime News Network. No, I interjected that. Due to the controversy that surrounds him. The actor has a history of sexual harassment allegations. That is true. Uh, there have been people you know, making allegations toward him for a while now. Some dating back as far as the 80s. Female voice actors and fans alike have made accusations against him, leading to his dismissal from Rooster Teeth and Funimation. Well, actually, um, what led to his dismissal from Rooster Teeth and Funimation was the Anime News Network article that actually did fake some evidence and had him, you know, standing next to teenage girls saying that, you know, basically implying that he was creeping on them. And that was not the case. They were actually, they wanted their picture taken with him. Now, have there been allegations around the guy for years? Yeah, there have been. I mean, I'm not going to lie again. I don't know him. Uh, but, you know, I know people have different opinions of him, but I, again, I have not seen anything that was like a smoking gun that this guy did any of the things that they claimed. And it just seemed like the media was basically getting together and deciding he had to go. For whatever reason, he had to go. Several anime conventions have dropped him from guest lists. Uh, in 2019, Midnana pursued legal action against his accusers for defamation and tortious interference. Again, he went after Funimation, and he went after uh, Monica Rial and Jamie Marshy. And I don't think he should have. Again, if it were me, I would have gone after Anime News Network first. Uh, because they had less money. <laughs> you could have taken them out very, very easily. Very easily. You could have nuked them back then. Uh, later that year, a judge ruled in favor of the defendants and Mignogna was compelled to pay for their attorney fees. Uh, yeah, his, his lawyer dropped the ball. I'm going to be honest. Everybody's like, oh, Ty Beard. Da, da, da. No, his lawyer completely dropped the effing ball. We saw with Johnny Depp that these cases can be won if you have sufficient evidence. And I think Mignogna actually had evidence to prove that he wasn't doing these things. You know, or at least there wasn't proof that he was doing these things and he should have won. But I honestly think his lawyer, I don't know what the hell was going on there, but uh, I'd never hire the guy back. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, in, in August of 2022, the courts affirmed the judge's original ruling, but referred to a misjudgment of the amount of fees required. Indeed, the amount Mignogna had to pay for legal fees increased while the actor made motions to appeal. They were dismissed in September. Um, Voice actors' fans have attempted to set up events and reinstate them as a guest at conventions, but have faced many setbacks. Yes, the setbacks are if you try to bring Vic Mignogna to your convention, you will be harassed, threatened, and doxxed. That's it. You will be harassed, threatened, and doxxed. I've seen it time and time again. Th literally threatened. People have been literally threatened for daring to bring Vic Mignogna to their convention. They've actually gone after payment processors. Uh, they've gone after sponsors. They will, they will go out on Twitter and tag in your other vendors and be like, did you know they're bringing this accused sexual harasser to the convention? How dare you? We don't want anything to do with it, says anime fan 22196989. Uh, each venue canceled soon after they faced community backlash, not community. It's a handful of people. I'm telling you right now, it's a handful of people that have, uh, for whatever reason, have a major ax to grind with him. And I do believe the media is involved in this. I do. I think the anime community media and the comic book resources and the Twitter people are all involved in colluding to get certain people blacklisted. Vic's one of them. Uh, Van Skyver, Ruth Van Skyver is another one that if you do anything or try to do anything publicly, uh, because they've got control of these, you know, uh, uh, nerd hobbies and it is a very small community. I mean, the anime community, the anime, uh, con scene and the dub scene, those are very small. It's not like Dave Chappelle where you're dealing with freaking Netflix and like Netflix is too big to cancel, right? Um, you're dealing with very small groups of people and they all talk and a lot of the volunteers work different conventions and we've seen, we've seen it time and time again, right? Uh, the autograph signing ended up, 
as an official meetup in a parking lot from uh, yeah, Omaha, Nebraska, and then continued in a local Chili's restaurant. What they're not mentioning is the conventions he has gone to, they have had massive lines. Again, this is, this is very much... Um, this is very much a hit piece against Vic Mignogna. His last role was in 2019. No, no, actually he did he did voiceover, I guess, for another convention they were doing dubs to. But his fans continue to petition in his favor and promote him for new work. Now, he is doing work with uh, Nippon Animation, I guess. Amy Matsuri is doing their own dubbing studio. Again, I don't know the details of the situation. I want to be clear about this because I get people you know, saying that I'm defending sexual harassment or whatever. I'm not. If if somebody comes to me and says, you know, here here is smoking gun proof that Vic Mignogna has done the things that these people have claimed that he has done, right? And you show me some evidence that I can be like, yeah, okay, okay, I got it. This guy's a creep, a hundred percent. You know, then I'm going to change my story on it. I have not seen that. It's been years. I mean, it's been three years, and I've I've actually had this offer open for three years. You, if you're one of his victims, you come to me and give me smoking gun evidence that he has done all these things that people accuse him of doing. And uh, I'll tell you, Hey, um, you're right. You're right. This guy is absolutely positively a dirt bag. But when you've got the media out there lying with headlines, like Vic Mignogna exposed himself during a live stream, And then building an entire article around a Twitter user that is known for harassment and doxing and cancel culture and trying to cancel people that she doesn't like on YouTube and all this other stuff. It's it's really hard for me to take you seriously. You know, when you you put an article up on Anime News Network, um, misusing photographs to try to paint this guy as being like a child molester or something. It's really hard for me to take you seriously. But then there are other people that in the industry, and it's no secret, that are legitimately involved in some shady, illegal shit, and they get a pass, you know? Like everybody knows, but they get a pass. And um, again, this is just very uh, typical of, I believe, Anime News Network, comic book resources, and where they're at right now. Uh, Katakawa, good luck with that. This is what you bought. You're going to find out the hard way that this is what you bought, and you're probably going to have to scrap editorial completely and start over again. If you want if you want your site that you paid money for to be, uh, you know, to not be the laughing stock of anime journalism, you're going to have to start over. So good luck with that. That's your problem, not my problem. I actually would have made it my problem. I actually was fishing around. I would have bought Anime News Network. I could have gotten the money. They didn't pay very much, but there we go. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.